welcome you all once again. Yes. And we work together. We make little more efforts <coughs> to, to understand our things. Okay. And uh, today we plan to, to do is we are still in the process of uh, we are trying to understand the construction of higher energy space Fourier modes. Okay? 
we could expand them in the Fourier modes. So uh, these modes, often for short, called as modes, they are nothing but the annihilation and creation operators that we have seen everywhere in mechanics, quantum mechanics, in quantum field theory, then we quantize the theory. Right. So the three important things that we we encounter everywhere is A of K, the dagger of K, and A dagger of K, A of K, which we define as N of K, which is the number of the Right. This A is and A daggers and these number of operators. They could be bosonic if you are considering bosonic theory. Right. So you are considering bosonic variables, bosonic fields. Okay. And this goes all the way to let us say bosonic string theory or simply string theory where you talk in terms of the, so here for example, uh, the Fourier group action, you can you can obtain without going into the details. Right now, we go according to a certain theme, we want to understand that the occurrence or the need of these objects called the annihilation and creation operators or the Fourier modes. We have seen that in harmonic oscillator we can expand X as a linear sum of A and A dagger. Okay. And once you do that, then it's enough that you can construct everything else about the theory, except that you also postulate or you define that this so this also you define okay I think the rest of the properties they automatically fall so for example here for the for the one dimensional harmonic oscillator you would expand x as some constant times a and A dagger, I could, uh, I may not remember the, the plus and minus signs that should appear there. Uh, <coughs> so X is some constant times A plus A dagger. And this, of course, you again define that N And if you were considering, so here also you can find maybe some constant. No, only. So you can see for the harmonic oscillator, you can find out the equation of motion just from the, from the Lagrangian. Now, <coughs> if I do that for The real scalar field theory, you can find of f mu equals to zero. You know, the prime order equation is the field equation that you obtain by the variation of the action for the real scalar field theory. In the context of complex scalar field theory, you would have one more equation m square uh, times phi star of phi dagger as you like. If you like, you can write it like that. So, <coughs> what you have here is uh, is that you, you append phi of x 
some constant, let me ignore the constant. So let me not even say this equals to, you can write some constant times k of k equal to the other one of k x plus k dagger of k equal to the power plus i k x. And if you have, so this would be the Fourier decomposition of the Fock space decomposition for the real educator field. Okay? And if you were to consider a complex theory, complex regular field theory, then this would also be constant A of K plus. Now you will have so uh, this would be to be phi. Uh, let me let me write only let me write only B dagger uh, then B of or am I creating too much mess? Let me be more careful. So for Theory. However, for the complex scalar field theory, 
this will be b mu phi star or dagger as you like times b mu phi minus m square phi dagger phi. So I have two independent fields. Now phi and phi dagger are two independent fields and therefore I have I need two independent sets of the annihilation and creation operators. So I introduce one A and one B dagger and as you can see if you take the dagger of this Hermitian conjugate of phi, this would be phi dagger, then I would have the Hermitian conjugate of B dagger would be B, P to the power I K X would be it is minus I K X, Hermitian conjugate of A would be A dagger and that of this would be E to the power I K X, right? So, in these two cases, and here you have, here in the first case, for the real scale of field theory, the, the wave equation or the field equation, or the field equation A plus, for the complex scale of field theory, you have two plus m square phi equal to zero ok, what is the complex conjugate of that? Okay. what is the complex conjugate of the other? so phi star of phi dagger as you like ok, so but here now let us look at uh, we, we keep these things in mind and so for the oscillator in quantum mechanics I have A, A dagger and M. Okay. In real scalar field theory I have P of K, P dagger of K, N of K, which is defined as K dagger of K, P of K. And for the complex scale of field theory, I have two sets. So, uh, K of K, K dagger of K, N of K, this is uh, N, so now B of K, and n. If you like, I could put a subscript here n a for the a, and I could put a subscript b here. So this is equal to so. <coughs> By putting the levels A and B, I can say that this uh, set of three things, annihilation operator, creation operator, and the number operator for A type of particle. Okay, for example, N, B, B dagger, and N, B are the annihilation, creation operators, and the number operators for the B type of particle. Okay? Because you have two independent fields. Phi and phi dagger are two independent fields. In fact, uh, in LS or Y, I will show you that I could in principle even break this up into two real scalar fields, phi 1 and phi 2, and I would have similar objects. I could describe this theory in terms of two real independent fields, phi 1 and phi 2, which are independent of each other. Okay? You see, if we are smart enough, we can see 
that this whole logic keeps working all the way to string theory and all the way to string theory. Now, here just to point out, without writing this, uh, any relation, you see, if, now here everything would be both only. Alright? All the field variables, all these operators, uh, operators of course are at the quantum mechanical level, but uh, even the, 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 the variables, field variables, at the classical level, they are also bosonic, and then I I construct the Hamiltonian, and if I promote it to the to the quantum level, then this would be a Hamiltonian operator. Okay, so one could, in general, say that all the field variables, classical or quantum, they are bosonic. Okay, and so all the modes that in the string theory usually one doesn't. Uh, as a, as, a, as a normal language, they simply keep calling them modes without saying any relation creation operators. Okay, but so but they are the Fourier modes. These are also Fourier modes as we have seen that you get them by the decomposition of phi. And how do we call it the focus space decomposition? There are two simple reasons. Uh, you can prove that n of k, n of k, and n of K prime, you can prove this to be zero. The commutation relation of so n of k commutes with n of k prime, or you can say that this is diagonal. Okay. I I might for uh, for illustration purposes I might even show you the explicit. Uh, calculation for how to write down the matrix. Okay. In any of these theories. Okay. And this would continue to happen all the way to super string theory. So uh, uh, could I could I remove some of these things from here? Perhaps I could. So uh, let me remove everything. Okay. The, the only difference is when I talk about the Dirac spinner field. Then you know Dirac spinner field is a Dirac's Fermi particle. And therefore, the, at the classical level, the field psi has to be a fermion. Okay? Has to be a fermion in particle. And therefore, if I would make the Fourier decomposition for this field psi, Dirac spinner field psi, then the corresponding annihilation and creation operators, they would be fermionic in nature. And we, we know that the fermionic variables, they anti-commute. So I might illustrate a little bit. And the equation of motion, of course, would no longer be the klein gordon equation, but it would be the Dirac equation. Okay. So uh, whenever I say big equation, then we assume that it is always at the classical level, okay? In, in classical physics, you have wave equations, but uh, truly speaking, they are all field equations. And field equations can be quantum mechanical. If you, if you promote your phi, psi, etc. to quantum mechanical fields, express them in terms of the Fourier modes. Fourier modes, they, are, they involve annihilation and creation operators. Operators are quantum mechanical operators, and then the left hand side, which you have expanded for phi, phi dagger, psi, psi dagger, they are ought to be uh, fermionic operators. Okay? So, uh, uh, now, What is the purpose of doing for What kind of things that we can achieve? This was the question uh, primarily uh, uh, raised by, by Sarah, and which I am trying to answer. In any case, we have to understand all these things. So, in, in which order we do, it's, it's a different, different thing. So, uh, yeah. 
For example, that defines your vacuum state, and of course, if you uh, operate on your vacuum state with the reason of the one, you create a one particle state. Okay. So you can write it like this, or you can write it like this as you like. So this will be one particle state if you if you uh, you can you can you can you can express it as a linear superposition of uh, this kind of expressions of the creation operators operating on the vacuum state. Okay. Vacuum state vacuum state is a state with infinite energy. Okay. In in harmonic oscillator you have seen that as H, uh, H or EN the energy levels they were that was S cross omega e decker plus one half this is S cross omega times N plus one half. So here uh, S on N would give you uh, S cross omega N plus one half and this would give me S cross omega n plus one half n this I could write as E n n and so I would have E n s cross omega okay मैंने दो पहले वैसे ट्रायल के लिए बनाई थी कहीं उससे तो नहीं हो सकता है। Okay. 
it's, it's better to measure energy differences, okay, or with respect to the vacuum level. So this is one point, and <coughs> then you can come back to this again, and you can you can construct you can, you can apply this angle again. Uh, again on the vacuum so you construct so like you can say that it's a two particle stick and here one particle carries the momentum level k, the other carries the momentum level k prime. Okay. So in general you can you can construct this and so your I I forget the general expression you can write down the and of K uh, as your. I mean that's a that's a that's a simple looking result, and if you like, you can back it in a complicated manner. So n of k one. And of K2 and a dagger of K1 raised to the power and of K1 a dagger of K2 raised to the power and this And of K1 factorial, factorial, and so on, and you can operate it. So you can, you can, you can operating on the vacuum state, considering a linear superposition of several creation uh, operators in this manner. Of the regime operator in this manner, you can consider you can construct a n particle state, but we need to remember what kind of these creation operators, what kind of these Fourier modes are that we are using to, to, to determine the nature of what n particle state you have constructed. So, if I am considering only a real scalar field theory. If I if I do it, I construct a two particle state, but these particles are otherwise identically the same except that the momentum levels are different. Okay? But if I were considering a fermionic theory, not even a fermionic theory at the moment, let me still stick to the uh, to the complex scalar field theory. So complex scalar field theory has got two types of uh, 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 two sets of these, so I would also have traditionally this would be the this would correspond to the to the, to the vacuum definition of the vacuum and the dagger of K would give me now this would be this is this corresponds to this one particle state corresponds to the A type of particle, but this one particle state corresponds to the B type of particle. Okay? Yeah, because we have we have introduced we have started with two fields, two independent fields, phi and phi dagger. Okay? And therefore we have two sets of these Fourier modes, A and A dagger and B and B dagger. And accordingly, correspondingly there, there are number of operators. So 
Here I would have, uh, I can also construct a two particle state. One of them K prime, one of them K, and one of them K prime, and one of them K. So this would be the two particle state, but I can also construct the two particle state consisting of then uh, here both of them are let us say type B particles and now I would have one particle of A type with momentum level K prime and one particle of B type with momentum level K. So this would be my two particle state. But now you see this two particle state is different than this two particle state. But in any given theory you can construct an exhaustive number of these states. So uh, of course there would be only a finite number of two particle states. Similarly there would be only finite number of three particle states in any given theory. So you can construct this uh, and you can construct the n, n particle state of different kinds of particles. Okay. And, and here because by definition, by construction, real scalar field theory, complex scalar field theory, they are the theories that are defined in terms of the bosonic field variables and therefore the corresponding all the operators like A, A dagger, B, B dagger and their products of the type I mean an A of K could be defined as A dagger A and and B would be defined as B dagger and B. So I have two types of the number operators and A and N B. And now for any theory our ultimate aim would be to somehow calculate and determine the observable things. Okay, which can be contrasted with some theory. Right? So what kind of things you have? Uh, charge operator is one which is from some of these constants, let me say, let me let me not write down the details. Times you can write n of a uh, minus. So of course, you will put a summation over in, in, in the uh, multi, multiplied by the constant, but a summation of a, over k n of k minus n of k. Okay. You can calculate the Hamilton. You can calculate in general, okay, the Hamiltonian energy, okay as some constant times summation over k times n of k plus n of b. If it is if it is real scalar field theory n of a plus n of a so it's twice n of k. Now what happens let me slide it over and not really giving a, 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 a detailed lecture on the symmetry, but it might be just meaningful to, in, in this context, what are the things that you like to, to measure, what are the observable things that it theory has, okay. So it's not that because Daya tells you that there should be energy, there should be charge operator, no, there are, there are certain well-defined rules for doing, for doing this. For example, so,
can you have quantities in a theory? Uh, so you know the well defined Neoder's theorem, Neoder's law. Uh, if, there is a, if there is a symmetric transformation under which the theory remains invariant, there must be a corresponding conservation law. That is what it says. Right? So, for example, if I, so symmetries can be internal symmetries, symmetries can be external symmetries, right? Uh, external symmetry is, for example, more easier to visualize that because of the space-time translation or because of the space-time rotations, okay? These are, and internal symmetries that take place at the same space-time point. These are the internal symmetries uh, which, uh, which are also very important and they lead to the conservation of charge. So what happens is you obtain the mu j mu. Okay? So if the theory is gauge invariant, if the, if the, gauge, if the theory is gauge invariant, it has gauge symmetry, it is invariant under certain gauge transformations, corresponding transformations are the gauge transformations, and if you demand that the Lagrangian remains invariant, you can calculate what is JMU. Okay? And uh, uh, for example, in a, in a, in a, in a, uh, in a theory like phi going to phi plus delta phi, m going to m plus delta m, for, for a simple real scalar field theory, it's very easy to, or, or real or complex does not matter, it's very easy to calculate it like this. And, <coughs> So uh, here, uh, my n is a function of phi k, give you phi k, and so uh, delta n phi k. D mu phi k, this you can uh, and then you can use Euler Lagrange equation here, and you can sum these two things, and you can easily write this as d mu of del m over del d mu phi k times delta phi k. This I could write as g mu if I could identify this object by g mu. So. <coughs> This is a very fast and, and simple derivation that you can look to. Now the point is, if I have, you can write it as j0, j0 plus, let me write k and k. Uh, this is just some, some, some symbol k. So my minus del k is g k. I can multiply both sides by d q x, d q x, and I can integrate on both sides, right? So this would then this this is a this is a total divergence and it can be converted into a surface, surface integral, and the surface integral goes to zero at infinite surface boundary. Surface in this boundary or at infinite space time boundary. Okay? So, what I get is this.
this I could write as J0. Okay. And I have made a mistake. Del 0. Del 0 J0. This is D to X. Uh, D by D to of J0. Uh, I can I can take this out. For example, if my theory has a symmetry called as a gauge symmetry, which is an internal symmetry taking place at the same space time point of the manifold, then this would lead me to the conjunct charges. This the charge, this charge operator, uh, this is here my J mu, so I can uh, J mu is del L over del del mu phi k delta phi k summation over k. So uh, so uh, then I could given the Lagrangian or the action of the theory, I can always calculate the charge operator of the theory. If I would do it for a real scalar field theory, I would of course get zero. Because the real scalar is a charge neutral. Okay. However, if I would calculate it for uh, a complex scalar field theory, I can do it in multiple ways, uh, and uh, you will always have that result. So, <coughs> of course, uh, as long as you express your result in terms of the field, then that is a classical expression. So, uh, but you can. You can construct the corresponding so so charge you can calculate some phi dagger dot minus multiplied by some constant, okay? And then you could eventually, for example, for this theory, you could construct it to be uh, n or a or b minus n. The k because this constant that I'm not writing here takes care of plus or minus over on plus or minus over. Okay, and so <coughs> you can you can you can find out uh, the charge of the particle A and B. It would be uh, opposite to each other, and the rest of the properties of these two particles A and B would be identical. Okay, so. As long as we talk in terms of complex scalar field theory, I can always only say that particle of the type A or particle of the type B. However, if I consider and do the same calculation for the Dirac spinner field, then of course my, my this charge operator would be of course like like something like this. But there you could you could you could identify or you could say that the electronic charge or charge of an electron or the charge of the molecule. Okay, so the anti particle would be a positive one here, right? So uh, all these things they they stay the same for all these theories, and but in addition to so this uh, invariance under the gauge transformations or under the gauge symmetry relates to the conserved charge, which uh, which also is to be determined everywhere in all the theories. So this is one physically measurable or observable quantity, the, the charge, okay? Uh, the classical charge is the classical level and this is the quantum quantized charge, okay? And <coughs> the, the other things are, they, they happen uh, because of the external symmetries. So, is this translation invariance of a theory under space-time translation or invariance of a theory under rotations of this time. So uh, you you will immediately reconnect the famous equation 
energy momentum tensors, del alpha T alpha beta is equal to zero, and this would this would lead to uh, the zero T zero beta equal to zero. These are when I write it like that, then they, I am talking about densities. If you integrate it to the full quantities. Uh, You could construct always the full quantity by uh, summing over the entire space. Okay, so so like this, and now by this I uh, I want to say that this will t zero beta has four components, and what are these components? T zero zero, t zero j, and what are these? This is h by t. So this is the field energy, this is the field momentum. So for any theory, I can I can calculate at the classical level expressions for the field energy, expressions for the field momentum, and then I can go to the so-called second quantization, use my Fourier decomposition, Fourier modes in terms of the integration creation operators, and then I can calculate these quantities in terms of the integration and creation operators. Okay. And the field energy, as you know, has always to be positive definite. So, in fact, uh, uh, we don't notice these problems as long as we are talking in terms of the bosonic fields. But about half a century ago, uh, the, the all over the, the world, like right now, if we could do string, string theory, gauge, or gravity theory, boson stars, neutron stars, cosmology, everything at the very leading level. Uh, at that time, the, it was the time of the development of quantum field theories, basics of quantum field theories. And then, this problem of obtaining positive definite field energy for the Dirac spinner field was a big problem. And then, this, now we know that they are the father figures of the, the quantum field theory, Jordan, Wiesner, Dirac, Corey, all these guys, they, then they invented no no. The, the the animation creation operators involved in the Dirac uh, pocket phase decomposition of the Dirac field, they have to be fermionic. Of course, we, they want, we want them to describe fermions. But then they must be different than the bosons, and therefore they must have anti -commute. And when you do that, then you, you get the light sign. And the energy, field energy becomes positive definitely. Okay, I would not be giving details of these calculations for any of these fields, but what is important is to know these results. And similarly, so here there are four conserved quantities, field energy and three components of the field movement. Okay, these are four quantities, charge operator is separate, these are four, four. And, and similarly, if you have these are gamma, so this leads to N0 beta gamma and this this guy is so uh, I could I could call it by a different name uh, let me call it and beta gamma. So this, as you see, is a is a is a, is a matrix. Okay. So <coughs> this would lead to the conservation of this implies conservation of six quantities. Uh, three components of angular momentum and I J and this is anti-symmetric so minus I J I and 
three components of Lorentz boost. Operators, they will be and zero J So three components, three and three, and three would be just have the opposite signs, okay? So they are basically like N12, N13, N23, three components of the angular momentum. This angular momentum, I am referring to the field, angular momentum of the field, okay? And Lorentz boost operators, okay? We are time again, one, one time like. So, uh, what we have in this four dimensional field theory that we, uh, we consider in the Minkowski space, uh, we have four conjugate quantities, field energy, field momentum, we have six conjugate quantities, three components of angular momentum, three components of Lorentz boost operators, and you can, you can actually derive all these equations, uh, we, we, we ignore it for the time being because we have limited amount of time to, we have to go all the way. So, uh, but, but these are, they give, give us the physical insight, what kind of things we can calculate in a theory and why should we calculate them, why should we know them, because they are observable quantities. All these quantities are observable quantities that we have. In addition to these 10 quantities, 4 of these uh, resulting from the space-time translation, and six of them, these result from the uh, space, uh, the rotation in the space time. They, these six result from the rotation, space time rotation, they result from the space time translation. Symmetry and the space time translation, or symmetry and the space time rotation. And the, on the top of all that is the charge operator. Okay? So, uh, for a Dirac spinner theory, the charge operator is measurable in the laboratory. Right? the electronic charge and its uh, opposite uh, charge of the project. And they are the same but opposite signatures. Okay? So, uh, this is a short, short, in my, in my military lectures, I, I spent a couple of lectures on this to derive everything out and so on. And then I derived them for the principle theory. But let me just mention that we can do this and then we can go a little bit further.